Welcome everyone to our Cook with OC program today. Before we begin, Osteoporosis Canada acknowledges the land that our offices located in Toronto are on is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabek, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit and Métis. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. My name is Tracy Napoli, Director of Fund Development and Marcom at Osteoporosis Canada, and I will be your host today. Thank you to thinkbeef.ca for their partnership with this cooking demo webinar. This cooking demo will provide general information about cooking and food knowledge. It is not intended as individualized health or nutrition advice. If you have questions about nutrition, consult a physician or registered dietitian. Now, during the webinar, we want to hear from you. So if you have a question or a comment, you can click the Q&A icon at the bottom of your screen and enter it there, or you can put it in the chat. We will do our best to answer as many questions as we can during the webinar within the time available. Nutrition is a key component for strengthening and maintaining healthy bones, as well as in the prevention and management of osteoporosis. We are working to provide strategies, new ideas, and develop recipes to help you get the bone building nutrients needed for bone health. Osteoporosis Canada recommends that whenever possible to get calcium and protein through food sources. Including protein in your diet at every meal benefits muscle and bone health. Some examples are beef, eggs, fish, white beans, chickpeas, nuts, milk, yogurt, and cheese. The featured ingredient in today's cooking demo is beef which has many essential nutrients packed into each small serving and is a high quality protein providing nutrients that are difficult to get from other foods like iron, zinc, and vitamin B12. Beef is a concentrated source of nutrients providing a variety of essential vitamins and minerals for a small amount of food. Also, make sure to eat a variety of foods including fresh fruits and vegetables, whole grains, and foods that contain calcium, like yogurt, cheese, legumes, broccoli, bok choy, and almonds. Today's featured recipe is still all about summer, but can be enjoyed any time of the year. Grilled steak salad with 24 grams of protein and 150 milligrams of calcium per serving. You can get this and other recipes at osteoporosis.ca forward slash recipes, but I will also put the link to the recipe in the chat when we begin. It's now my pleasure to welcome Emily Richards, a professional home economist, freelance food writer, chef, and she is the author and co-author of 10 cookbooks. Emily also writes and develops recipes for print and online publications that include everyday cooking and healthy eating and can be found on TV, radio, and webcasts just like this one. Please welcome Emily. Hey Tracy, Hi, thanks so much. <laughs> there we um, go. I'm here. <laughs> hey everybody, thanks for joining me. Thanks Tracy. Um, I was just going over my recipe, making sure I had everything for today's webinar. <laughs> well, we are excited to get started. Well, we are making a delicious grilled steak salad and um, it's colorful, it's delicious. Uh, full of protein and calcium. So, and we're going to talk about all that um, as we go through it. And um, we're going to take things apart so that um, we can talk about substitutions for you and um, how to make it all year round. Because as Tracy mentioned, it is still summer. Um, and if you're an avid griller, barbecuer, this is a great recipe for you. But if you're not willing to go outside, that's okay. I'm not going outside today either. And we're going to grill inside. So we can talk about that as well. So we're going to start off with um, the flavor of this lovely steak salad. We're actually using um, a very simple marinade um, for flavoring three of our ingredients, the corn, the pitas, and the steak itself. So I'm going to start with that. And as Tracy mentioned, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask, um, put them in the Q&A or the chat, and um, hopefully we can get to them. 
And um, because I love this, I love being able to cook with you. I know I can't see you, but I know you're there. And um, it's always wonderful to kind of have that uh, back and forth so that we can chat. And I always love chatting with Tracy because I know how much she loves food. So it's a good thing, right, Tracy? <laughs> it, is a it is a great thing. And actually, well, just before you get started, um, we are, as always, we're going to give away uh, one of our aprons. And I see apologies, guys. I think my internet's a little slow right now. That's okay. It looks same, like mine. You can see it on Emily. You can see it on Emily. It's the same uh, unbreakable. So if you're on at the end of the webinar, I will announce a winner and we will ship this to you. So off we go. Perfect. And you know what? It does really help keeping things clean and tidy. So your laundry is much less by wearing an apron. Um, so we're going to start off with that marinade. And we're going to use um, one of my favorite chili powders. It's an ancho chili powder, which is basically a poblano pepper that's been smoked and dried. So it has that kind of smokiness to it. Um, a little bit of heat, but not much at all. And that's really what um, kind of gives it almost like a Tex-Mex feel a little bit um, for the overall dish itself. Now, if you're wondering, where do I get ancho chili powder? You can get it in the grocery store. Um, you can get it in, um, I have my little container here, okay? So um, you can pick it up in the spice aisle, but if you go to a bulk store, you can also just buy a little bit of it if you want, if you want to try it out. But if you don't have ancho chili powder at home, you can use any chili powder that you have at home, okay? Because it's still going to give it that lovely color as well as flavor. Then we're also going to add a little bit of brown cumin. Um, it just adds a nice balance to that chili powder. And I'm going to add a quarter teaspoon of salt. We're dividing up the salt here because we want it in a couple of places. So I'm going to add some salt here, and then I'm going to save the rest for later. So in the recipe, it calls for um, five tablespoons of oil. We're actually going to use some here, and then we're going to use some again later in our dressing. So for the first part, we're going to use three tablespoons, and I'm just using a neutral oil. Um, because I want the flavor of those spices to come through and the color is going to be really, really lovely as well. So here's my three tablespoons going in and I'm just going to give this a little stir. Okay. So if you're wondering, I called it a marinade, um, but there's no acid in here. We're not using something like lemon juice or vinegar in here. That's because the steak that we're using today doesn't need to be tenderized. We're using a nice tender steak. So we just want that flavor to come through. All right, so you can see how gorgeous that color is. It's just got that nice vibrancy and that aroma is coming through beautifully. So corn, corn on the cob, still in season. So it's a great way to use it. And we are going to add flavor to the corn as well as the pita bread. Now, if you're thinking I'm gluten free, I'm like, what, what am I supposed to do? You don't have to grill the pita because everything else that we're using today is gluten free. So um, you can add this. I kind of like having, I'm Italian, so I kind of like having bread with a lot of things. I will admit that I love carbs. Um, and grilled pita is actually fabulous. And we're using a Greek style pita. So it's a little bit, um, not a pocket, but it's a little bit of a thicker style pita, but you can use whatever type of pita that you have at home, or you can even use naan for this recipe. And it grills up beautifully, okay? So what we're gonna do is, um, and Tracy and I were looking at the nutritional information of the pita earlier. And because I happen to have the bag right here, you're, as you know, you, we said there's 150 milligrams of calcium and everything that you eat through the day adds up. So all you have to do is look at those nutrition labels because that's where you'll find that information. So in one pita alone, if you take a look at the calcium, it's 40 milligrams or 3%. So add that up with the other ingredients that we're using in the recipe. And that's where we get that 150 milligrams, okay? All right, so we are going to coat these in a little bit of this mixture. So I'm just gonna put this spoon off to the side and get my brush. And you're just going to use a little bit of this and brush it over top of the pita, okay, on both sides, because we want that flavor. And you'll see the color of that chili come through really nicely. And that little bit of oil we need because we are putting it on the grill, right? So we may have a bigger brush. I just have a little brush. So it takes a few little back and forth here to get it all over. And then we're going to do the exact same thing with our corn on the cob, okay? So um, if you don't have corn on the cob or you want to make this maybe later on when fresh corn on the cob 
isn't in season, you can use some frozen corn or canned corn in place of that. So all you would do is measure out almost a cup and then you can saute it in a little skillet with some of the spice mixture and the oil and you're gonna get that nice smokiness in there. So it's a great way to make this recipe all year long. Now I am gonna do a little cheat. Let's pretend that I'm going out to the grill <laughs> and I'm gonna come back and show you the corn that I've already grilled. I did do this ahead of time, but only because you can do this ahead of time. Um, it's a fabulous, fab, fabulous make ahead. And I also grilled off the pita. So you can see how beautiful the grill marks are and it actually crisps up. So it's got a nice crunch to it. You can hear that, that it's nice and toasty and you can cut this up and we'll serve it later. But I just wanted to show you. So the pita takes about two or three minutes on the grill and I used medium high heat um, and that little bit of oil on both of these help from it not sticking on the grill. Okay, so I'm gonna set that aside and you can do the same. You can get this grilled, even if you needed to, you could do it the, the day before. If you're kind of already outside grilling something and maybe you don't wanna grill the steak the same day because you're gonna make it the next day. And then I have my grilled corn and the corn itself is nice and blistered. It's got some char on it. So it's gonna add a nice smoky flavor to wow. our overall salad, okay? I'm gonna cut this a little bit later. So I'm just gonna set it aside for the moment. All right, so that was fairly straightforward. Now we're gonna talk about our steak, okay? So I have two steaks to show you here. Um, basically because we only need one, but I wanted to give you a few options. So the idea of this recipe is that you buy one really delicious steak and divide it up. The fact that it's a nice grilling cut, it's a nice tender cut of beef, we don't need to kind of spend time marinating it. We just want to add the flavor. So that's what this will do for us. So two of the steaks that you can use, this is a ribeye grilling steak. So if I hold it this way, you can kind of see it's slightly thicker. Um, but from the top, you'll notice that it has beautiful marbling, as does the strip loin steak, which is another alternative. Okay, so this ribeye has a really nice, if you um, do prime rib roasts, that's kind of that beautiful center cut right there. And then this strip loin has a, just that little bit of fat cap on there, which also helps with that juiciness. But overall, you're looking for that beautiful marbling within the steak itself. And that's what helps give you that nice, tender, juicy steak, okay? So what we're gonna do is, I'm actually gonna use the strip loin today um, because it will cook beautifully in this grill pan. And that's where we're gonna be grilling it. So all I'm gonna do is take the remainder of my marinade here and brush it all over my steak. So we're gonna get that same smokiness. We're also gonna get that beautiful color on our steak. I'm gonna just flip this over and do both sides. And this will be perfect for the grill because it already has that little bit of oil on there. Now you can grill everything at the same time, or as I said, if it's easier for you, you can grill it in different times. So if you wanna do the veggies first and then the steak, okay? So I think I have both sides coated well. I'm just gonna finish that little bit right there, okay? All right, so we need to heat up our grill pan. Let me get my hands a little wash. And you would do the exact same with your grill want to make sure that you turn it on so that it heats up, okay? Because that's really what's going to give us a nice um, char on the outside and then help cook it throughout. I have my tongs here that I'm going to keep handy, okay? So I'm just going to set this aside for the moment while my pan heats up because we have to make the rest of the recipe. Are there any questions, Tracy? I think we had a couple of questions earlier um, when people registered just about the best way to cook a steak so that, you know, sometimes we overcook it, sometimes we burn it, sometimes it doesn't come out exactly the way we were hoping it would. What are some good tips to do that? I'm not <laughs> saying I, maybe one of them was my question. But I was yeah. going to say, are you calling yourself out here, Tracy? Because that's that's a, that's a wonderful that you're sharing. It was a very specific <laughs> question. Yes, it was a very specific question. Well, it's a question that comes up often, especially when 
it's um, it's a, a great cut of beef and you don't want to, you don't want to burn it. You don't want to overcook it, but you still, you do want to enjoy it. So one of the best things I can recommend is a thermometer. Okay. Which happens to match my apron. I didn't even realize I didn't do it on purpose. I swear. Um, this is an instant read thermometer. So what that means is um, if I open this, you'll see a digital, you can see that um, a digital number that's coming up. So that means it's going to give me a reading instantly when I put it into the meat. Okay. So this is going to be super helpful to give me the meat that's steak in this case, if it's um, a roast or anything like that, it's the temperature that you're looking for. So right now it's saying 70 because it's a room temp. Um, but when we put it in the steak, that's what's gonna give us um, our doneness. So that's really one of the best ways. And if you're thinking, well, that steak doesn't look very thick, Emily, how are you gonna get that thermometer in there? I'm actually gonna go sideways so that I get into the center of the steak where if it was a roast, let's say if it was a, a nice big roast, you could kind of go in from the top and get that center because that's really where you want the temperature from. And if I went through the top of a steak, I might go too far and actually go down to the grill or the skillet um, or the pan that I'm cooking it in and get the wrong temperature. So going in sideways gives you that um, correct temperature. And I'll show you when we get there um, how to do that. So my pan, I can feel the heat coming off of it, we should get a good sizzle. There we go. Okay. And we're just gonna keep an eye on it. So one of the great things about having an indoor grill pan or an indoor grill is that you can keep an eye on it while you're doing other things. Or maybe you have a helper in the kitchen that can kind of keep an eye on this. If you're going outside and grilling, I would do all the grilling at the same time and then come back in and finish the recipe or vice versa. You can do the salad part, which is what we're gonna do next, um, and then go out and grill everything. So it's really up to you, okay? So this steak is about maybe three quarters of an inch thick. So we're looking at anywhere from five to 10 minutes to cook um, and turn it, depending on how well you want the steak done, okay? So some people, my dad was one of them, he loved well done beef. So well done is that it's still got some tenderness to it, but it's typically um, fully cooked throughout in the center. It's all the same color. That's really kind of the best way to put it. It's cooked. Um, and then I kind of like more of a medium doneness. So um, where it has that little bit of pink inside, which I think adds a lovely texture and flavor to the beef. So you can cook it to your family's liking and um, then everyone will be happy. Okay, so we'll keep an eye on this, but what you'll notice, and you can't kind of see it here um, too much, but I will tilt the steak so that you can see it from up above, is that it's cooking from the bottom up. So that's why we wanna make sure we flip it so that we get a nice even cook on both sides, okay? And maybe we'll even cross hatch it, see if we can get some nice grill marks on there. All right, so the salad component is going to include our grilled corn and our steak, but lots of other delicious stuff. So I have this big, huge bowl that we're actually gonna do the dressing in first and foremost, so that I don't have a bunch of other little bowls. Um, I can just put everything in the big bowl, which is much easier for cleanup. So I'm gonna start off with my Greek yogurt, okay? So here's a one, an ingredient that should be obvious that it has calcium in it, but it also has protein in it. So it's a great start to our dressing, okay? So I'm gonna get that in there. And it's also gonna add a nice little bit of tang to our dressing, which really brightens up the dish overall. And then I'm also gonna add a little bit of mayonnaise, okay? The mayonnaise actually adds just a hint of sweetness to it. And if you've ever had a creamy dressing, usually there's mayonnaise in it. Now, if you, I'm gonna talk about potato salad just for a second, because that's one that a lot of people make. And I'm just gonna give this a little turn, quarter turn and they use mayonnaise. But what you can do is bump up the calcium and reduce your mayonnaise and add Greek yogurt to it. So you get a bright, fresh flavor, the added bonus of the calcium and some protein in there too. So you can add that to your, your potato salad or macaroni salad, okay? All right, I also have my recipe here so I don't forget ingredients because that would be terrible. Um, Tracy will keep an eye on me though and make sure that I don't forget any ingredients. I'm gonna add a little bit of garlic. This is just a small clove of garlic that I'm adding in here. If you're not a fan of raw garlic, 
what you can do is actually just saute the garlic in a little bit of oil so that it's cooked in there, okay? So that it doesn't, I know some people are bothered by raw garlic, but still add it, just cook it a little bit because it does add a ton of flavor. I just flipped our steak. So you can see I have this beautiful golden crust on the outside. It's caramelized and it's a little bit deeper in color because of that ancho chili powder in there. And I wish I could walk the smell to you because it's absolutely amazing in here. I'm pretty sure my dogs are going to be running in soon enough because they know what a good grilled steak is on. <laughs> All right. So let's add our um, other ingredients. Talked about freshness and brightness. We're going to add some lemon rind and juice to this dressing. So uh, what I have here is just um, a lime rind, not lemon. You could use lemon though. Actually, lemon would be lovely in here too. So if you don't have limes, let's call that a substitution and you could use lemon juice and lemon rind. So I'm just using the rind here. I only need about half a teaspoon and I'm taking the rind, just the rind itself off with my microplane or rasp. And anytime you're using fresh citrus like this, make sure that you've washed your citrus, give it, and then you'll notice right away when you give it a little wash that that fresh lime citrus flavor will come through. So there's my half a teaspoon. And it's got a gorgeous color as well. And then we're also gonna add a tablespoon of lime juice. So this is just some lime juice that I squeezed before we started. I'm gonna add that in there too. And I wanna check the temperature of my steak. So I'm gonna hop over to the steak just for a second because I want to make sure, again, it doesn't really take that long to cook. So I'm holding my thermometer in. I'm gonna go in sideways into the steak here, okay? And let's see where we're at. If you take a look, I'm already at 130. I don't know if you can see that, there we are. I'm already at 130, so I'm almost done. I'm looking for about 140, 145. Um, I'm gonna take it off at closer to 140 so that it has time to rest and reach up to that 145, okay? Because I really want that lovely um, hint of pink inside the steak. All right, let's get back to this dressing. I'm gonna add some pepper, just a quarter teaspoon. Okay, and then I'm also gonna add the rest of that salt, which is just another quarter teaspoon that I'm adding in. And I'm gonna give this a little stir, okay? So this has a nice creamy dressing, which I think cools off that little bit of what could be considered heat, but the spice of the ancho chili, okay? Nice little stir there. All right, and then we can add our other ingredients, which are protein, fiber, and believe it or not, calcium. I'm gonna start off with my black beans. So this is a 14 ounce can, so a 540 ml can, slightly smaller than a traditional can of beans. Uh, but if you happen to just pick up the 19 ounce can, that's totally okay, it will still work. You'll just get a little bit of added um, fiber, protein, and calcium. And that's what I want Tracy to talk to you about because when we think of calcium, sometimes we think of the obvious, like the yogurt that I use um, and the cheese I'm gonna use as well, but we forget, or maybe we don't know that beans actually have calcium too. I'm gonna add this to my- You're bowl. right, yes. I'm gonna jump in while you're you're stirring in the, uh, in the beans, but not all beans are equal. So we always go back to really read your product labels. We also have the calcium calculator on the website. So for example, chickpeas and white beans have more calcium per serving than the black beans, but the black beans still do have some calcium in there. So definitely read your product labels. Um, there's lots of different foods um, that do have calcium, some on the smaller side, some on the higher side, but it's all about how you incorporate all those different foods into your diet and into all your recipes. All right, Emily, that looks so good still. That looks, that looks, that steak looks amazing. It does. It, and it smells really good. It smells I good. Feel, we can't I, smell it. We'll I know. I, it. You know, you think all these years in, they'd be able to transfer the smell. We'll have to do a scratch and sniff on the computer <laughs> for it. Exactly. <laughs> all right. So we're going to add a few more things to our salad and a little bit more color. We're going to add some chopped tomato. Okay, so I've already diced, um, this is actually tomato from my garden. So I'm pretty proud of that, that I'm using up um, the tomatoes from the garden. And I just diced that up, that's gonna go in. But if you're not a tomato fan, 
um, or maybe you don't happen to have tomatoes when you're making this, you could use um, some peppers. Chopped up peppers would be lovely in here. Even roasted red peppers would be delicious. You could also use some leftover veggies if you had roasted vegetables from the night before that you need to use up. Just dice them up and add them right into the bowl because they're going to add color and flavor. And it will just add a nice combination with the beans and the steak, okay? I'm going to set that aside because we are going to deal with our corn now. We're going to cut the kernels off that corn. So here's our corn. Now, I'm sure if any of you have um, watched any kind of cooking videos and things like that, there's lots of ways that you can um, cut kern corn kernels off. You can use a bunt pan. You can use a bowl. But I'm just going to do it right here on the plate um, <laughs> and cut it. The main thing is that you want to hold it securely. Um, and um, you can, if you want, you can hold it with a tea towel, um, whatever you feel comfortable with. Now, this process of holding it because the corn is so tall um, might be a little bit um, hard for some. So what you can do is actually cut the corn cob in half. And because it's a shorter distance, it's a little bit easier just from holding up your, your arm and not putting so much pressure on. However, for those of you that may remember what I said when we started, you can also use frozen corn kernels or canned corn kernels, where this process is alleviated, right? You don't have to do it because you're using kernels. So I would use about a cup, um, whether it's the frozen or canned. And then as I mentioned, you can just saute it with a little bit of the spice mix so that you're not missing out on that flavor. Okay, and you're still going to get a bit of smokiness from sauteing it into a, in a skillet. I'm just going to cut that last one off. And it didn't fly all over the place. So I'm okay. I didn't make too much of a mess. And I always appreciate that because I'm the one that has to clean up after. <laughs> all right. So that is our beautiful um, grilled corn kernels. That is also going to go right into our bowl. There we are. Okay. And I'm gonna check our steak one more time here. I think it's done. If you hear it, my dog is barking. That means that someone's probably walking by there. Okay. So I'm going to take our steak and just put it onto my board that has this nice little um, fruit catcher essentially, because it's going to get nice and juicy. Okay, and I'm just going to let it rest right here because we want to give it some time before we slice into it. Okay, just like that. All right, now let's get back to the salad. So what we're going to do is just stir everything together. But there's a couple more ingredients that I'm going to add. One being some cheese, and that's feta cheese um, that I'm going to add. And that really helps season, adds a nice little bit of texture and a little bit of brininess to the salad as well. You can hold back some of the feta if you want to sprinkle on top, but I like getting it in there so that every bite has a little bit of feta. And then I'm also gonna add some chopped fresh cilantro or coriander, okay? And that's gonna give us a little bit of green. And I know usually somebody out there is not a cilantro fan and that's okay because you don't have to add cilantro, but you can definitely add a fresh herb. Maybe your garden is overflowing with fresh herbs, maybe some dill or mint, even parsley and basil. So look for those more delicate herbs for this salad to offer up a really nice bright flavor, okay? So you can see how nice and creamy these veggies and beans are coating nicely, just like so. And what I'm gonna do is, this is actually on its own, Let's take this recipe apart. On its own, you can put this in the refrigerator for a couple of days and divide it maybe into lunch containers because you're prepping lunch. And then you can put your steak on top or you can pack it separately and add it each morning to take to work. It's a great lunch to have. You're getting lots of protein in there and all the added bonuses of the veggies and the calcium in there. But we're gonna serve it on a little bit of salad greens, okay? So you can have this for lunch or dinner. Um, if you're sharing or maybe not sharing, um, you can spoon up the salad just like so. I'm just gonna put it, and there's enough of the creaminess of the dressing 
um, that will help get some of those mixed greens nice and flavorful. This could also be some baby spinach if you wanted, or baby arugula if you'd like a little bit more pepperiness to it. Okay, just like that. I'll put it all on. I'll be willing to share. If I could have you all over, I would. But I know some of you are maybe a little too far to come to Guelph and, and have lunch with me, but we'll do it one day. Tracy still has to come for lunch. She's always saying that there's all this food. I'm on my way, Emily. <laughs> I'm coming right now. Look how beautiful it is. You know what I wanted to mention? When yeah. you were mixing it in the bowl, it actually, I don't know, to me, I was like, oh yeah, it's a nice portion, but it actually looks like so much more once you spread it out on the, like, that's a really good sized meal for a few people. And you, it it's is. one steak. You've, you've paid for this beautiful steak and you can actually serve. It's for four servings, the recipe that we have, or it is and eat again tomorrow. So that's how right. That? It is, it's, it is fabulous. And it's a great point because oftentimes we're going to the grocery store now. And I remember there was a time that, you know, um, as a kid, we'd have people over for dinner and everybody got their own steak, yeah. uh, which is a lot. That's, that's a, that's a big meal. So you can still have a beautiful meal and share it with family or friends, but you only need one steak. Um, and what happens here is you still are full because of the benefit of the protein. And here you have kind of a little bit of extra protein with the ingredients, but you're also getting filled with the vegetables and it looks beautiful too. And I think that always helps in kind of the, the sustaining your appetite um, and enjoying the meal, which I think is lovely. So I'm just going to do a swap here and I'm going to bring my steak closer to me so I can slice it up. And this is just really a presentation. You could chop up the steak and stir it into the salad, but we're gonna just lay this, the steak right on top so it looks beautiful. And this is also, I always think, when I'm serving steak and slicing it thinly, this is between me and you and everybody that's here today, is that people tend not to take as much because they're not sure just how much to take when that steak is sliced up. So it's great, you're actually controlling portions, which is beneficial for everybody, uh, but they're still getting a great flavored meal, which I think is fabulous. So I'm gonna and grab- before you, before you cut in, can we just talk yeah. about the benefits of letting your meat rest? You oh, know, for sure. people say, oh, I made this, this, this um, cut of beef and it was dry. And it, if you let, just like everything in life, we all need a little rest, right? If you let the meat rest, it will change how you cook. And, and let's let Emily tell us about the benefits of that. Well, there's a few benefits. I mean, the fact that um, we're cooking it to a certain temperature and we're actually, it's still cooking when you take it off, whether it's the grill or a skillet or the oven, it still has to cook. So if, you, if it's a larger roast, let's say, I would tent it so that that heat remains in there. Um, and you can do that with a steak as well. Um, I'm kind of moving a little bit faster, so I didn't tent it, but um, it really just lets kind of everything relax. And like Tracy said, you need to rest. It's all good, so so does your steak. Um, sometimes you'll hear people say, well, the juices have to go back in. They're not really going in, they're just kind of settling um, so that when you slice it, it's not like a shock. Um, and this also gives you the time to get everything else ready, right? So you have your salad ready, you're totally relaxed. Now you're gonna do this great presentation of slicing the steak and putting it on top. So this is also the opportunity to um, take a look at your steak and figure out how you're gonna slice it. So often you will hear, you know, against the grain, you have to slice it against the grain and that's really important. So here, I also want to make sure that this, the slices are kind of even in size so that when it's distributed, that everyone kind of can get the same amount. So um, from looking at the steak, I kind of looks like the grain is going this way, but it's also kind of going this way. So it's really gonna be that first slice that helps me determine which way I'm gonna cut it. So I am gonna go a little bit on an angle here and just do one little slice. And I think I might be okay to go on this angle and continue, okay? And nice thin slices and it's cooked to my liking, which is perfect. Um, and of course, it's kind of like a, a medium, medium rare. 
um, which is what I was looking for because it has that lovely bit of pink inside, but it's cooked through. And as I'm cutting it, there's not juice kind of coming out all over. That juice that's on the cutting board is just from the resting of the steak, okay? So you can just add that. I actually love taking that and drizzling it over if it was mashed potatoes, or in this case, the salad that we're using, because that has a ton of flavor as well. Okay? So these strips are going to be just a little bit longer, but that's perfect because they will look beautiful. Um, when you are slicing steak like this and you want nice thin slices, the one thing I will recommend is having a nice sharp knife if you can. Um, I'm just using a chef's knife, but you could use a carving knife if you're more comfortable with that. Um, and it just gives you that nice, even slicing of the steak. And I'm getting just to the end here where there's a little bit of that fat cap. So I'm gonna hold back on that. Believe it or not, that's really good with a little bit of bread, but don't tell Tracy I told you. <laughs> and then we're gonna just put this right on top of our salad like that. Okay, now let's say that you don't wanna serve this right away, but you grilled the steak. You can actually slice your steak if you'd like. And then what you can do is, I'm gonna drizzle some flavorful juice over top of the steak. You can slice up your steak. And then, as I mentioned earlier, you could then have it all portioned out. So if you wanted to do those lunch packages, for example, that I was talking about, you could have a little bit of salad and then top each one in the morning with some of that sliced steak. I'm gonna also tell you that this makes a fabulous sandwich. So you can actually, if you happen to buy these pitas, which I'm gonna bring over here, because I'm gonna cut those and put them alongside. If you buy the pocket pitas, the ones where you uh, cut them open, um, you can actually put some of the salad in the pita with some of the steak, and it's a fabulous grilled steak salad sandwich. Okay, so I'm just gonna cut these in quarters. And then it makes a wonderful garnish with the salad so that you can have a little bit of that pita bread with the salad as well. Just like that. That's it. That's how easy the steak salad is. And you can have it for yourself or up to four people because that's what the salad serves. What do you think, Tracy? Do you want some for lunch? Um, yes, please, because uh, I know I'm not going to get that today, unfortunately. <laughs> that looks that looks amazing. Um, so I was we we did get a question. Um, so somebody um, asked us, you know, they're one person they'd like to make this. So would it be as easy as um, having the recipe, and then if you get the steak and you buy it fresh, you could cut it in half and maybe freeze half of it and only prepare half the steak, or what would you suggest? That's a great thing to do. Um, you can also buy smaller steaks. So yes. um, this one um, at its size was just over, it was like 225 grams, so almost about eight ounces. So typically um, if you're looking to serve two people, you can go anywhere between three and four ounces per person. Um, we're stretching it to two ounces per person. So even if you find a smaller steak, a beef tenderloin steak, for example, would be beautiful for this because they tends to be a smaller steak, nice lean grilling cut, and will benefit again from that little bit of flavor marinade um, and grilling really easy. So for a smaller household, those steaks are perfect. A top sirloin would work as well um, because they tend to be a nice smaller steak. So the other option is exactly what you said, get the bigger steak, cut it in half, you can freeze half. The other thing you can do with that fresh steak, if you feel like it, and I do this often in, in our house, is I'll grill a larger steak and then portion it out and freeze that portion. So it's already mm -hmm. cooked so that all I have to do is take it out. And if I'm adding it to the salad or I just want to add some protein to something, I have a flavorful grilled beef steak ready to go and to add to salad, sandwiches, or even just to have it, you know, as a little protein hit. Because when it's sliced like this, it's really easy to just kind of pop in your mouth and eat. I know. No, that's a great idea. And if you're, let's say you, you're not comfortable for whatever reason, you don't want to cut your own meat in half. If you go to at your grocery um, store and you go to the butcher counter and I've had them do this for me and you say, oh, I'd like that. Could you just cut it in half for me? 
and they are happy to do it for you. So, you know, feel free to, to do that. Um, somebody actually did ask if we had a recipe to make your own naan or pita bread. Um, no, but we do have a recipe on our website. If you are looking for it, to make your own pizza dough using Greek yogurt. And it's a no need, no, no yeast. You don't need yeast. Um, it's a really quick recipe. So when you get on the recipe to find this, um, sorry, when you get on the website to find this recipe, you can actually find um, the, the pizza recipe as well. And that has another, that has another bunch of calcium and protein in that recipe because we use the Greek yogurt as well. So you can find whatever you'd like on the Osteoporosis Canada website. We have all kinds of recipes. We have more coming too. That looks amazing. What we normally ask Emily to do is to taste this for us since <laughs> we cannot. I will just say that looks like such an abundance of food. And it is, it is so great because that's going to feed, you know, yourself more than one meal or you and, and, and someone else or you and your family. And so that's really great. I did want to, because we are going to give the apron away, but before we give the apron away, we we have people from all across the country on the webinar today and, and on many of our webinars, cooking demos, but we actually have a lot of people who are outside of the country. So I just wanted to say hello and thank you for joining us from Crete in Greece, from Turkey. We have people also who've come on from the US, from Australia, and from the UK. So uh, welcome to everyone. Uh, we hope you're enjoying our Cook with OC program, just like everyone else is here. So happy to have you on. And the person, I'm just checking the name, and I do apologize. I hope I pronounce Elaine Delesco De from Calgary, Alberta. Mm. Congrats. You're going to get this apron. I will email you. We will ship it to you. Emily cooks in it. Happy cooking with you. Um, so well, thank you. let's be clear, Tracy. She's not getting the one I'm wearing. Mine you're right. Wearing. You're going to get a new one. <laughs> you're going to get a new one. You're going to be the one without, without all the, uh, all the, all the stuff. on it. So thanks to everyone. Um, I'm just going to uh, pop up my screen here. Uh, let's just do that. And just wanting to share, as I said, we have new recipes. So osteoporosis.ca forward slash recipes, all different kinds for all different meals with strategies, with tips about substitutions, how to bump up your calcium and your protein, um, you know, for all different uh, meals and snacks that you have. So check out the new uh, recipes on our website. Now, also on our website, which I did mention, we do have the cal Calculate Your Calcium tool. So if you're looking to see, um, you know, these are foods, not all foods, but foods primarily that have calcium in it. Uh, so you can get online, you can put in legumes, you can put in uh, milk products, you can put in vegetables, whole grains, and find out per serving how much calcium. Check out our podcast, check out our blog. And this is being recorded and will be available on the OC Replay webpage. Um, so if you want to watch it again, you can, or if you know someone who missed, uh, they couldn't make it today, they can also watch it. Um, so that will be on in about 24 hours. We'll have that on the re replay uh, page on the website. And before we go, thank you to thinkbeef.ca because our partners help us get on to our, uh, help us get these programs on, um, which is really great. And also to Emily, I'm just quickly, we've got two uh, questions here. Oh, no, somebody said, um, Elaine, you're welcome. Uh, Elaine met you, actually, Emily, at uh, Where did we meet you, Elaine? and Jasper. So, oh, uh, my gosh. Yeah, exactly. And so um, hope you uh, all happy cooking. We wish you happy cooking. We have a lot of new programming. If you are not already subscribed to the website, I encourage you to go to our homepage, go to the top right hand corner, uh, click on the subscribe button, and that way you will get invitations to all of our new programming. There's a lot happening this fall, um, and we hope to see you there. Emily, thank you. Thank you, thank Roy, you. Who's behind the scenes managing all of this. Um, happy cooking, everyone. Stay well, and we'll talk to you later. Take care. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thanks, everybody.